Hi, it's me. Just wanted to say Merry Christmas, even though it's too hot to wear a t-shirt and so I'm wearing a tank top and it's December and it's totally Christmas, but I would sweat through a t-shirt because we live in Southern California and it's hot and this baby is making my head sweat, but I'm in the Christmas spirit, I am. Good morning, afternoon, evening, middle school ministries. It's so good to virtually be here because I'm still on vacation. It's probably still lovely and I'm probably still loving it and just totally in the Christmas spirit. But I am stoked because this week, regardless of whether I'm here or not, we get to talk about Advent, which means Christmas, which means Jesus, which means yay! You know, all those combined into one. This week we are focusing on the spirit of faith. What does it mean to have faith? Because kind of like all these words we're using throughout the four weeks of Advent, they all kind of turn into the same thing. And we realize that they're all fancy ways to remind us that Jesus loves us and his birth was a big deal, which I love. But before we get to that, we do have some announcements for the rest of 2020, which is bananas. So I'm gonna throw it over to our announcements. What's going on, Lake Avenue Middle School? Uh, I'm Wes, and I am here to give you guys some announcements. So we got three announcements for today. Um, first, Sunday sermons are always at 1 o'clock, followed by Zoom. So make sure you guys go check that out. Also, life groups are every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. If you want information, you can always go on our website or contact Leah or Josh. And then finally, um, be sure to check out our Advent videos uh, these are going to be on the Lake Avenue Family Ministries YouTube page. Um, and then finally, just to repeat again, if you guys have any questions, just make sure uh, to email Lake Avenue. Um, look for Lee or Josh, and we'll see you guys on Sunday and Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Fantastic. We have our announcements done. So we're going to dive into our scripture. So this week, for this week of Advent, we are focusing on the spirit of faith. What does it mean to have faith? And what does it mean to have faith in the waiting? The waiting of the coming Messiah, the savior of the world, the promised gift of salvation from God to humanity. Wow, that takes a lot of faith. So this week we are going to be in the book of Luke, uh, not the leader, the book of Luke. Uh, we are in chapter three and we're reading four, verses four through six. This is what they say. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight and, the, and rough ways smooth. And all people will see God's salvation. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we welcome you to our spaces. And God, we welcome you in our hearts. God, we pray that as we sit in this anticipation of Christmas, uh, the purpose of Christmas, the coming of Christ, God, I pray that we keep our eyes on the purpose of celebrating this miraculous birth. Because God, you are a God who keeps promises and you promised us Messiah and delivered. And God, we get to sit in the joy of the aftermath of seeing everything Christ did in his time on earth. I pray that as we continue to look at what it means to have faith in your promises, I pray that you speak through me and my words will be a form of worship to you. Amen. So when it comes to faith, I feel like a lot of times we say it, but we don't really talk about it if that all makes sense, because in my head it totally does. We talk about have faith, believe, um, I don't know, stand the test of time. But I feel like have faith and believe are big ones that we have. Trust, that's another one. So we say to these like, almost like uh, trigger words where it's like, which should trigger something within you to remind you, oh yes, remember that God is good and Jesus is our savior and the Holy Spirit is in me. And I feel like most of the time it does, but like most things that become so redundant in our lives, good or bad, we just kind of block them out. That when we hear that, we go, yeah, yeah, I know. Because we do, subconsciously, we already are very aware of what we should be thinking in the direction of our thoughts. But at the same time, it doesn't hit us the same way it did 
the first few times we heard it. Sometimes we need these reminders. And that's why we have a liturgical calendar. So we have Easter, then we have the Ascension, which is 40 days after when Jesus went back to heaven after raising from the dead. We have Advent, these four weeks of anticipation. They are meant to be annual reminders that even though we go to church every Sunday, even though we talk about Jesus regularly, here are reminders of how big of a deal it is that we are doing this and why we're doing it. Because it's easy to go through the motions, but it's not always easy to admit and acknowledge our why. Why do we have faith in Christ? So today, this week of Advent, last week we sat in this anticipation of hope. We hope that one day this Messiah will come. We hope that this will happen. And it's a beautiful feeling to have hope because you, sometimes you lose it. You can have a loss of hope and you feel like nothing's ever going to happen. But that is a choice you can make. But having faith is sitting there going, I do not have all the answers. I don't fully understand what this means for the long term. But I have faith that God will lead me regardless. I believe in the words that God told Abraham. I believe in the words that the angels told Mary that she would have the baby Christ. I believe these words, therefore, with this evidence, I can carry out that if God cared for them, God cares for me. And so that's why I picked this verse for Luke. Um, it seems kind of random. I mean, we were in the book of Isaiah last week where Isaiah literally describes to us, what the Messiah will look like. The fact that he'll blend in. He won't be cared for. People will despise him. But this week we are also reminded that that wasn't the only time that Isaiah pointed out the purpose or the identity of Christ. I mean, it's something where because we already know who the Messiah was, Jesus, we are able to be fact checkers. We can go back and say, Isaiah said this, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Oh, Isaiah said that. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. But the difference is back then they didn't have fact checking because they had no one to fact check against. They didn't have Jesus to be like, oh, you are doing all of this before he was born. When he was alive, they did do that. But it's this anticipation and this waiting and this belief that, you know, the God that did it once can do it again. So that's when we get into this idea that Luke is telling us that, you know, this is John the Baptist who is preparing and telling his followers, hey, I am not the Messiah. I know that I am baptizing you in the name of God, but I am not the one who is going to save you from yourselves. That person is coming. And so this is when he, he pulls back, he goes, remember, because as Jewish people, they went to the synagogue regularly. Most of the men had memorized the Torah. They had scriptures embedded in their hearts so they sometimes you'll see them they have uh, men have boxes on their heads and they have things strapped to their arms those contain strips of paper with scripture on them and so it's to remind them I am wearing this because I want to keep my mind on God on Yahweh I want my strength to come from Yahweh and so it's yes we have these reminders but at the end of the day we have someone coming and that's when, that's when John says, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, reminding you that it's a book that we revere and we love and we trust. It is written by someone that we revere and we trust. And this person was appointed by God to give messages to God's people, a prophet. These are three big whammies for one human being. We can trust that when Isaiah says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, that Jesus will come out of what feels like nowhere. He's not going to be born into a royal family. He is not going to show up the way King David showed up and was a nobody and everyone's like, well, I guess you can be king. It's literally going to be almost out of nowhere, like out of the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Prepare yourselves for when Jesus is going to come out of nowhere and make it as easy as possible for him to serve you. So every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, 
the rough ways made smooth. So literally what they're saying is make everything that could be an obstacle for Christ, make that vanish. So it's like when you are building something with um, either Legos or building blocks, usually with building blocks, we're going to use that as our example. You have to lay a flat foundation. That's why working on carpet was such a pain because when you would start your building, if anyone moved the carpet fibers just a little bit, or if it wasn't perfectly flat, they could fall over. And so you couldn't get this firm foundation. You needed something perfectly flat and level because it made your job easier. It wasn't impossible to build on carpet, but it wasn't simple. And so that's what John is saying right here is he's telling everyone the way we serve our Messiah is we make his paths straight. That way he can't get lost. Let's make, give him a direct beeline to where we are. Let every valley where he would have to go down and come back up and probably be tired. He has to take a break. He's pretty human, you know, fill that in, make it flat and level. For every mountain, again, instead of having to go up to come back down and just be like, oh my gosh, I'm tired, I'm going to take it down, make that flat. Make it so he's walking in a straight line without having to do any extra work. Make all of the crooked roads straight and the rough ways smooth. And all God's people will see God's salvation. So John is saying this before Jesus shows up to be baptized by him. He's saying this to, again, his followers that are with him at this creek, at this river. And he's saying, I am not the Messiah, but I promise you the Messiah is here. We have to prepare ourselves because at the end of the day, this is no longer about hope. This is the faith in he is the Messiah. Therefore, this is what his job has to be. He is here to save us. And at the time, they didn't fully understand what that meant. They kind of thought he would be like a big bad ruler who would like kind of take down Rome and like, ha ha. And that's not what happened. Jesus was very like pacifist, you know, that kind of thing. So what John is saying is he's not giving any expectations to Jesus and who Jesus will be in the way of like, he's going to be a warrior. warrior. He's going to take over the kingdom and become a literal king. He's not giving any of that. He's also not saying he's going to be a pacifist who dies on a cross. And it seems like the end. Because John doesn't know that. But John has faith that because his mother Elizabeth, who is Mary, Jesus' mom's cousin, they met when they were in the womb together. He's like, I know who this person is and this person is here. This person is here to guide us, to lead us, to love us, that we just need to make his path straight so he can find us faster. And I think that that's the epitome of faith. Like when we are not in Advent and we are just talking about the life of Christ, I feel like a lot of times we kind of sit here and we go, well, yeah, I accepted Jesus into my heart or I'm still figuring out what Jesus means to me. But at the end of the day, I get it. But to remember to have faith is more than believing that this is true. It is acting on that faith. It is like what John was saying. Let's make his path straight as I prepare you through baptism for the coming Savior. I am preparing you for who is really coming. I am not doing the, the salvation. I am preparing you for salvation. And that is our job as Christians is to make the way easier for people to find Jesus. How do we act on our faith? How do we care for others? How do we care for our family who's right in front of us and our friends that we love dearly? How do we hold them accountable? How do we care for them in the way of physical caring, like food or time or paying attention? And how do we do these moments of celebration where we are able to be together and so excited and celebrating someone's accomplishments while at the same time being able to be like, when there is a time for mourning and for grieving, I will also be here. Because it's easy to show up when it's easy, when the paths are straight and smooth. But doing the hard work of making those paths straight and smooth to remind people that Jesus is on his way is not always easy. And that's where God comes into play. And we have faith that God is working. 
that as we work our high knees off to try and level out these valleys and chop these mountains into flat surfaces, that God is working through us and God is moving these mountains. So having faith this week, I want us to remember that we're not just sitting and doing nothing. We are not having faith and then going about our day like no big deal. We are having faith by actively showing Christ's path to others, by flattening these roads, by making them straight, by doing what Isaiah told us last week to remember that Jesus was not everyone's biggest hero, that he had more haters and more enemies than he did protectors and people who cared about him. So it's our job as people who protect and care Jesus, care for Jesus to help those that deserve and desire Jesus. Everyone is looking for something. So we as Christians just need to help them. It's not our job to make them believe. It's not our job to make Jesus appear like that. It's our job to just prepare this part of their path until they get switched to another person who will prepare that part of the path. I have faith in a Jesus who showed up as a tiny little baby and was like, wah, and helpless. And at the end of the day, saves me and you from our sins. That is so cool and I love it. And faith is probably a conversation that will never go away in our in our walk, in our journey with Jesus and our belief in Christ. And I want you to know it's a never ending journey, but this Advent season and this week specifically, we get to celebrate that we have a fulfilled faith and faith in what is to come. Oh, I love Jesus and it's all good things, but we do have the Advent wreath to do now. So I am gonna switch it on over. So last week, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope that the Israelites felt waiting for a Messiah to come. And this week, we get to light the candle of faith. The candle of faith reminds us that our faith in Christ is not just in the waiting, but it is in the actions that we take leading up to something happening, because God is always moving. So when John had faith that Jesus was coming and believed in the prophet Isaiah's words, we also know that in the end, Jesus always shows up. So let's work on our faith in action. How do we care for others through our words, through our action, and through our praise of Christ? So this week, we light the second candle, the candle of faith.